Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Kia Telluride, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Red Arc Tow Pro Liberty brake controller. And we're gonna be installing that in conjunction with the eTrailer.com universal brake controller install kit. So these Tellurides are getting more and more popular. You know, we keep seeing them more frequently uh, here in the shop. And people are starting to realize, you know, these are pretty capable SUVs, you know, so people are really kind of uh, starting to use them to do a little bit of everything. And that does include, you know, pulling some relatively large trailers. And if those trailers uh, have brakes on them that you need to operate, electric brakes, well then a brake controller is in your future. You know, you're gonna need one to operate those brakes on the trailer and pull it down the road safely. And uh, that's where a Red Arc brake controller like this is gonna come into play. It's gonna activate those brakes and, uh, and get the job done. With that said though, um, when it comes to brake controllers, nowadays, one like this, uh, a real small one like this Red Arc is a lot of times gonna be really your only option, honestly. And that's because on these newer vehicles, you know, I'm sure if you've, you've been in a couple of them, there's just so much going on. You know, there's so many accessories and options and buttons and everything else all over the place. You just don't have room for that big traditional style brake controller anymore. And so uh, by utilizing one that's real small like this, not only is it actually gonna allow you to mount a brake controller somewhere, but it's gonna look really good too. It, you know, you got all these small buttons. This is a small button, it kind of blends right in and, and kind of gives off that factory type uh, appearance. This brake controller is good for trailers that have one to two axles, which is uh, about perfect for this vehicle anyway. You know, you're not pulling any triple axle trailers with the Telluride. So uh, this one will get you, get you covered. And one of the nice things about this setup is the fact that it is a proportional type brake controller. All right, and what that means is it's going to, uh, it's gonna provide you with more of a predictable and a smooth stop, which is important. You know, you, you don't want to be getting pushed around all over the place or, or really fighting the trailer as you're uh, towing it down the road. So more or less what proportional means is uh, the trailer brakes are going to brake at the same rate that you're pushing the pedal down here inside your Kia. So for example, um, you know, let's say if we're uh, rolling up to a red light uh, up ahead in the distance and you're kind of just barely on the brakes, the trailer is going to do the same thing. On the other hand, let's say if um, you know you're you're going down the interstate and you hit some traffic up ahead, and you really have to come to a quick stop and really stand on that brake pedal hard. Trailer is going to do the same thing. So you know it kind of becomes a part of your car almost, and it just makes it easier to drive and easier to tow. So the brake controller is uh, is pretty straightforward in terms of actually using it. You know it's a little bit different than the uh, standard you know, type brake controllers that you may be familiar with. It, almost easier though, honestly. You're just gonna have a knob here that you can adjust from zero to 10, and that's going to adjust your braking force. So zero, brakes aren't gonna be applied at all. 10 is your highest setting. And uh, you know, this is really just gonna depend on how you like it to feel and how heavy your trailer is. So if you have like, Let's say maybe if you're bringing a bunch of stuff to the dump or something and you have a big heavy load, you know, maybe you might find seven or eight to be uh, more appealing to you on the drive. You know, you need some extra braking force because you're so weighed down. But, you know, let's say you get it all off your trailer, um, unload everything, and you're on your way home and you have a, a light load, you know, essentially nothing on the trailer. You don't need all that extra braking power. So you can crank this down to maybe like a one or a two and uh and go from there you know so you can kind of fine tune it a little bit and play with it uh, and kind of find where uh best matches uh you know your personal preferences and uh you know make your ride comfortable and that's what it's all about you know it is going to have a manual override and all you're gonna have to do is simply push down on the button and when you hold that down it's going to activate just the trailer brakes and uh that's something you would use let's say maybe if the trailer starts to kind of walk away from me a little bit kind of starts to get a little squirrely instead of hitting the brakes for everything if you apply just those trailer brakes it will help uh you know slow that trailer down and get things back under control and get it behind your vehicle safely so a nice feature to have hopefully you never need to use it but it's there if you do 
So at the end of the day, brake control you really can't go wrong with. You know, most importantly, it works really well with the Telluride. How it, uh, how it mounts up and everything else, it just, it just works with the dash, you know, so you really can't go wrong there. And not to mention, it's gonna allow us uh, to do what we're trying to get done, you know, and that's ultimately pulling a trailer with brakes. So uh, it'll work real well for that and uh, should get you going in the right direction. Now, as far as the installation goes, I'm not gonna lie, uh, relatively involved, you know, there's quite a bit of wiring and stuff like that to run, but I won't say it's complicated, uh, it's just time consuming, you know, for the most part. But as long as you stay focused, really shouldn't give you too many issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and hook it up together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our Kia, and first thing you wanna do is mount up your bracket. So this portion comes with the uh, kit, so I did use what's called a no-drill long bracket. That way I could secure the brackets to the hitch and I put a bend in it. That way I could actually uh, connect our seven-way round bracket to it. So with the bracket installed, we're gonna take our seven-way connector harness here, feed everything through, and then we're just gonna take the included hardware and get it secured. So you'll take a screw, and then on the back side of it, put a flat washer, a split lock washer, and a hex nut. So I'll go ahead and get all these started hand tight, and then I'll come back and snug them down. Now we can grab the four-way end coming off of our uh, mini harness here, and we need to plug this into the existing four pole wiring uh, that we already had installed on our vehicle. Before we get that plugged in though, what I'm gonna do is take some dielectric grease and just put a good coating on the threads, I'm sorry, on the terminals, that way uh, we'll be protected. You know, we won't get corrosion, things like that going on. So I'll give that a coating and this is simply just gonna plug right in. What I went ahead and done is just made a semi-permanent connection. I just wrapped the two ends up with some electrical tape and ran a zip tie around them. And now we can start to get these wires hooked up. So you're gonna have a yellow wire, this one here. I taped that up out of the way. Um, this is for your reverse light circuit. A lot of people aren't gonna be using this. Uh, it's primarily if you have like a, if you're pulling a boat or something like that. Uh, but with that said, um, if you do need to use this, you'd simply just tap into your reverse light circuit. These two wires here, we are going to be hooking up. The kit does come with these pre-attached buck connectors here, but I like to change them out for some heat shrink type ones. They just hold up better against corrosion. And what we're going to do to change those and get these hooked up is strip back the insulation there on the end of the wire give it a good twist take our butt connector slide it over the bare end and crimp it down so these are going to get hooked up to our duplex wiring so we'll get a big bundle of wire that uh, looks like this you can peel back some of this gray sheathing that'll expose two wires uh, underneath it you strip those ends back the black wire is gonna get connected to our black wire here coming from our seven way. So we'll plug that on in. Crimp down. The white wire is going to go to the blue wire from our seven way. So get this one plugged on in as well. Once we have both of these crimped down, since they're heat shrink ends, we're gonna come back with our heat source and seal them up. I could take this white wire here with the pre-attached ring terminal. This is gonna need to get grounded to the body of our vehicle. So here's a nice thick piece of metal that should work out real well. I'm going to secure it using the self-tapping screw. 
So now we can run our gray wiring up to the front of our vehicle. I'm not really concerned with all this just yet. You know, we'll get everything hooked up, make sure it works. And then, you know, at the end, we can come back and make it pretty and, and zip tie it up and everything else. But with that said, just ran our gray wire up through here. Make sure to avoid any hot or moving parts and you use some zip ties along the way to keep everything secure. So that gray wire is just gonna run over our rear subframe. And then from there, I simply just kind of follow these lines, these factory lines. So run it along through here and just really continued on forward. Routing it this way. And usually your best bet is to follow some factory type lines. You know, the factory ran them that way for a reason. So uh, why not use their thought process? So I just continued along and it runs up into the engine compartment. Now it's pretty open there. I just jammed the wire up there and I was actually able to uh, open up the hood and kind of reach down and grab it. So now if you pop the hood in the engine compartment, right here is where our wire came up and I zip tied it up there. And from that point, I got rid of the gray sheathing. So I separated the two wires, all right? We'll focus on the black wire first. So this one's just gonna get routed over to here where I had these breakers mounted up. So. When it comes to mounting up the breakers, this is a perfect spot for them. They're right next to the battery and out of the way. Uh, this one, where the black wire is gonna go to, that's the 40 amp breaker. And the other breaker, you wanna use the 20 amp. All right, so the black wire that comes right from our seven way is going to get attached to the silver post. So you just strip it back and crimp on a small ring terminal, just how we did the buck connectors, except just for ring terminals. Put that over the silver post, tighten down the nut with a 3 8 socket. And then you're gonna take, you know, obviously we cut this wire to length here. You're gonna take whatever is left or a piece of what's left. This is probably 16 inches maybe. Crimped on, small terminal, put it on the copper colored post over 40 amp breaker. And this is gonna get routed to our positive battery terminal. So I just eyeballed the length. We're actually not gonna hook it up right this second, but whenever we're ready to, it'll be all set up for us. With that said, let's move back to this other breaker. All right, so the 20 amp breaker, you're going to take what's left of that black wire. This is pretty much all I had left over here. This is maybe 18, 20 inches. So you're gonna take that small ring terminal, copper post of the 20 amp breaker. Again, this part will get connected to the positive battery terminal, so put the large ring terminal on there. Again, not gonna hook it up just a second. Um, so we'll just kinda let it hang for now. All right, with that said, what we're gonna do is wherever you, wherever you separated, um, this wire, you know, the white wire. I folded it in half and, you know, gave one end about another foot of length and cut, cut it in half. All right, so the longer piece of white wire, you're gonna connect that to the silver post here on our 20 amp breaker. And what I've done is just put a black mark on this wire just to help easily identify because we're going to have two white wires now that run inside the car. Um, so by putting a small mark on both ends of the, of the wire, you know, kind of separates it from uh, the other one and makes it a little easier to identify. But with that said, what you're going to do is take this wire and the one that comes right off from our duplex wiring and this is gonna get routed inside. Okay, before I, before I routed it down though, I did have to dr drill a small hole in the firewall and make a grommet, which we'll see in just a sec, but our wires ran right down through there uh, where the grommet is that uh, I put in place. 
With your universal brake controller install kit, uh, pretty much completely hooked up with the exception of the power wires right to the battery. Um, you know, now we can focus on getting our brake controller uh, connector plug hooked up. Once this is hooked up, then we'll go and uh, put power to everything. I just don't like to have hot wires kind of bouncing around in here. But with that said, the we'll start with the blue wire. The blue wire is gonna get connected to the white wire here that we didn't put a mark on. This is the one that runs directly uh, to the back of our seven way. So you take the strip in there, put it in the buck connector and crimp it down. Now with these, I'm just using the included ones. They're not heat shrink type connectors and not really a huge deal since these are inside the vehicle. Corrosion and stuff won't really be an issue. Um, and then we can take our black wire. This is gonna be the 12 volt power that will power up the brake controller. So that's gonna get connected to that wire. We do that the same exact way. And then what we're gonna do is just crimp on a ring terminal to our ground wire there. We'll find a ground here in a moment that we can hook up to. And the red wire uh, here in a moment, we're also gonna get that hooked up, but we'll just let it kind of hang for now. But now that we have our power supply and everything hooked up, let's go ahead and go back under the dash and get the wires hooked up to the battery. Back under the hood, we're gonna hook up our wires to this stud here. I'm going to grab a 10 millimeter socket and remove this nut. I'll we'll see if the nut comes completely off. Sometimes it's designed not to come off all the way. This one did. If yours gets hung up real bad towards the very end, uh, don't force it off. You can just cut slots in your ring terminals and, and put them on that way, but Ours came right off, so chances are good. Yours will too. We're going to slide that over the stud. Both of the ring terminals there. And simply just tighten it up back down. So now what we can do is hook up our red wire here from our uh, brake controller plug. Now this red wire is going to get tapped into the um, factory brake signal output wire, all right? And that'll be underneath the dash and kind of way up along our brake pedal arm. So it's going to be hard to see how I'm going to do this. So I figured I'd just kind of go over the technique that I'm going to use to get this hooked up. So we'll pretend this green wire uh, here is a factory brake signal wire. The way I'm going to hook these up is by using a quick splice, okay? So what you're going to do, we'll see those holes in there. Brake controller wire, you're going to plug in. Just push it through. And then the factory wire is going to slide in between like that. And then what you're going to do is take a pair of pliers and crimp down that metal tab there. And when you push that down, that's gonna connect those two wires together and complete the, uh, you know, complete the connection. So now that we know how to do this, I'm gonna crawl underneath the dash, get it hooked up, and I'll show you what wire I used and uh, how it looks. So I got that wire hooked up. Now let's go ahead and check it out. So just to kind of give you guys a reference point here, we're underneath the driver's side dashboard. And if you look at our brake pedal, Essentially, if you go straight up and kind of against the firewall, that's where our connection is going to be made. So here's the connection that we made. The wire that we're going to be working with, the factory one, is going to be green with a thin black stripe. And so I use that method that we talked about to uh, pair those two wires together. If you want to double check to make sure you have the right wire, what you can do is take a test light and probe that, probe that wire there. And push down on the brake pedal. Whenever you push down on the brake, if your test light gets power, um, you know that's the correct wire. You also wanna make sure when you let off the brake that of course the uh, test light turns off. So test light will go uh, with the brake pedal when you push it down and let go of it. 
So that's one way you can double check um, to make sure you have the correct wire. So the last wire remaining is going to be the white wire that we hooked that ring terminal to. So this is going to be uh, grounded to the body of our vehicle. Turns out that there's a couple uh, empty studs against the firewall there. And so I just used one of those. I did have to find a nut, um, you know, to, to put on there. Uh, we just had that laying around. You can go to your hardware store if you got one laying around. If not, you can always use a self-tapping screw and just screw it to the firewall. With that said though, make sure you're not gonna screw into something, you know, behind the firewall, like the brake booster or wiring or anything like that. So just really take your time, make sure that uh, you're in the clear uh, before you screw into it. But with that said, now we can go ahead and focus on getting our uh, brake controller mounted up. Now we go ahead and get our switch set up. So I'm choosing to mount ours in our fuse panel cover there. Uh, it's a really good spot. And then, you know, in the future, if you ever want to get rid of the brake controller or something like that, you can simply just replace this panel, you know, and not have to worry about a big hole in our dash. But with that said, um, you're just going to drill out a couple small holes there that line up with the switch. Put it in position. There's this uh, plastic ring. You want to make sure that that little nipple there is pointing up in the 12 o'clock position. And then you're going to turn the knob all the way counterclockwise. Then you can take this knob and you want to make sure when you put it on that the zero is facing that nipple there so kind of just snaps on that way it's clocked right you know when you turn it all the way to the right it'll end on 10 all the way to left it'll end on zero so uh, now that we have that set up though you're going to get a cable kind of looks like a phone cord a little bit uh, one end of it i'm going to use a straight end that's going to simply plug uh, right into our uh, switch there just kind of push a wire through then we can go underneath and mount up the actual brake controller and get it plugged in so if you look our uh, cord comes to the brake controller itself um, and plugs right into the back of it the other side of the cable you know from all the wires that we hooked up plugs into the brake controller as well and then I just securely mounted it using some zip ties to that big fat bundle of wiring that runs right up through there. So it's really secure. It's not gonna shift or go anywhere and should provide us with a uh, good mounting position. So now what's left to do is uh, hook, uh, hook a trailer up to our seven way at the back there. Make sure the brake controller is getting power, which I didn't hook up a trailer. I just used a, a test box that is simulating a trailer. And as you can see, we do indeed have some power here. We can see that the Light is flashing from green to blue uh, pretty pretty steadily. And what that means is we have to calibrate this. So good news is calibration is easy. All you're gonna have to do is simply drive around town like you normally would. And after you make several uh, you know stops with your brake pedal, this will eventually turn a solid color indicating to us that you know it is indeed calibrated. Now you don't have to have a trailer with you uh, when you're doing this. You can have it, you can have the trailer. You, you don't need to have it behind you, kind of however you feel comfortable doing it. And once you're calibrated, you're all good to go. So now that we have everything hooked up, it's a good idea to test our wiring and whatnot. And uh, that way we know it's working properly. So with that said, we'll try our left turn signal, our right turn signal, our running lights. In the top right corner there, we have our 12 volt auxiliary power. And then we can test our brakes as well as a brake output signal as well. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Red Arc Tow Pro Liberty brake controller on our 2021 Kia Telluride.